My name is Paige Williams, and today I'm going to be doing a slideshow on the obstetrical ethical dilemma of who owns frozen fertilized eggs in a divorce. What are frozen fertilized eggs? There's a big difference between frozen unfertilized eggs and frozen fertilized eggs, or frozen embryos. A frozen embryo occurs usually for couples who are trying in vitro fertilization. The embryos may be frozen since the success rate is around 50% with IVF, so that a new egg doesn't have to be fertilized for each attempt at pregnancy. Some people who may benefit from IVF and therefore may encounter this scenario of this ethical dilemma are a husband's sperm to fertilize his wife's egg, a husband's sperm to fertilize an egg who is not his wife's, a wife's egg fertilized by the sperm of an unknown donor, the sperm of one member of a gay couple used to fertilize an egg from an unknown do donor, or the egg of one member of a gay couple fertilized by the sperm of an unknown donor. A fertilized embryo occurs when an egg is extracted from a woman and fertilized in a petri dish by donor sperm and is usually inserted back into the woman where the embryo grows until birth. In case IVF doesn't work on the first try, several fertilized eggs are frozen at once and can be frozen for years to avoid needing to re-fertilize more eggs on each pregnancy attempt. The major ethical question that couples choosing IVF may run into is, in a divorce, should frozen embryos be treated as property or as children who require custodial decisions. In this ethical dilemma, the stakeholders are people who would be affected by the decision that is made in this ethical dilemma. In this scenario, the stakeholder could be either parent of the embryo. This could mean it could be the parent who wants to keep the embryo versus the parent who does not want to keep the embryo. In most cases, when a couple starts in vitro fertilization at the clinic, they sign a contract that states if they're to ever divorce, the frozen embryos will be destroyed. Theoretically, this should prevent there from ever being this scenario where there's a disagreement about what happens to the embryo if they were to divorce. Unfortunately, some clinics may not require married couples to sign a contract stating what should happen to the embryo if they were to ever divorce. In this case, courts usually side with the parent who decides they wish for the embryo to be destroyed. Two ethical principles that apply to deciding who frozen embryos belong to in a divorce are beneficence or the obligation to do good and non-maleficence, the obligation to do no harm. Beneficence would be helping the parent who is unable to have kids by allowing them to use the frozen embryos after their divorce if they're unable to have kids. Non-maleficence would also be to not destroy the frozen embryo and to not cause pain by allowing the parent unable to have kids to use their frozen embryo, even though they're getting a divorce. My opinion is that frozen embryos should be treated as if the parent's already pregnant with the embryo. At one point, this couple decided to make the choice to try IVF, and I don't feel like the embryo should be destroyed just because they're getting a divorce. However, I do feel that if the mother wanted to keep the embryo and the father didn't, the father should also be able to sign his rights over and his financial obligation to the child, to the mother, and vice versa. In another circumstance, I also feel that if one member of the couple has biologically contributed to the embryo, but the other donor is an unknown donor, the parent who has biologically contributed to the embryo should be the parent that gets to decide whether the embryo is destroyed or used for conception. Unfortunately, there are a lot of differences between each case with what would be the right thing to do with the frozen embryos. Therefore, I feel like it should be taken on as a case-by-case -case matter, and we still have a lot of room to work on when determining what happens to frozen embryos during a divorce.